So in our lesson today, we are going to discuss back titration. Now, before I do that, I would like to say this. Back titration is a bit more complicated than direct titration in that it involves more steps. But I want to assure you this. If you pay close attention to what is going to be discussed in this video, then I have a feeling that you might end up enjoying questions on back titration more than direct titration. I don't know why, but you know what? The questions on back titration feel more challenging and spicier than the boring direct titration questions. You feel me? So let's dive in. Now, in the case of back titration, you're always going to have two steps. That is two different chemical reactions. So you're going to have the first one followed by the second one. And in most cases, you're provided with three reagents. So let's say you're going to have reagent labeled A, B, and C. Now, in the first step, you're going to react reagent A, which can also be a solid, with an excess solution of B. Emphasis on excess. Now, in the case of A, this is going to be completely reacted. That is, all of it is going to be used up in the reaction. What about B? Remember, we used an excess volume of B. Some will be left unreacted. You know, because the solution used was more than what was needed for this particular reaction. So you're going to have a specific volume of B that is left unreacted at the end of step one. Now, in step two, what will happen is that you're going to take the excess of B and react it with the third reagent, which, as we stated, is labeled C. So essentially what will happen is that you're going to take C and titrate it against B. This is where the titration part comes into. Now, when we have titration, in most cases, you're going to have one solution in the burette and the other solution in a conical flask. So in this case, the excess volume of B is going to be placed in a burette. While C is going to be pipetted, when we pipette, in most cases, we pipette 25 cubic centimeters. So you're going to pipette 25 cubic centimeters of C and place it in a conical flask. And you're going to carry out your titration. Now, the reason why this is called back titration is because you're literally going to be working backwards to find out the volume or mass of A, depending on what the question is asking you. So in this case, you're going to start out with C, move on to B until lastly get A. So this is a model that summarizes what happens in back titration. A reacts with B. But because B is in excess, only a part of it reacts with A. This, the shaded part, is the one that is in excess. And it's the one that reacts with C. Now, in case you're wondering, why use back titration in the first case? Why not just normal direct titration? Now, this can be for several reasons. Let me mention two. Back titration is necessary when you're dealing with a substance that is not soluble in water. So it cannot form a solution. Or when you are dealing with a substance that contains impurities, and these impurities would interfere with the normal titration. I want you to look at this question of ours. In this question, we are being told that we have solid A, which contains 2.65 grams of impure anhydrous sodium carbonate. So we have an impure substance, and that is the reason why we are going to carry out back titration. And if you're talking about an impure substance, actually, one B we are going to be asked for the percentage purity of this substance at the end of the question. But don't worry, we're going to get there and you're going to be okay by the end of it. So let's look at the reagents we've been provided with. As stated before, they are three. We have solid A, as mentioned. This is impure anhydrous sodium carbonate. What does this mean? It means that in that mass, 2.65 grams, not all of it is sodium carbonate. You're going to have a portion of it containing something else, and this is what is termed as impurities. We are also having two solutions. One solution is Y. This is 0.4 molar sulfuric six acid. And another solution labeled B. This is 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide. Now, guys, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the procedure and I'm going to illustrate it diagrammatically. You know, I'm going to use diagrams to help you process the information better. This is something that I use for myself to digest, you know, the information that is provided. And I'm hoping that it's also going to work for you. So let us start with the first step. Using a measuring cylinder plus 80 cubic centimeters of solution Y in a beaker. So there we have our beaker. And it contains solution Y. What is Y? 
sulfuric 6 acid solution. This, of course, has a volume of 80 cubic centimeters. And this 80 is going to be excess, okay? I trendele. In number two, add all of solid A and star until effervescence stops. So what is solid A? Sodium carbonate. We are adding it onto the beaker where it's going to react with sulfuric acid. Now, sodium carbonate reacts with sulfuric acid to form sodium sulfate, water, and carbon-4 oxide. So look at the procedure. We are adding solid A and stirring. Why? To speed up the rate of the reaction. But we will only stop when effervescence stops. So effervescence is simply bubbling. You get this when you have a gas being produced. If you look at our question, carbon-4 oxide gas is being produced. So if effervescence stops, that means carbon-4 oxide is no longer being produced. And this can only happen when the reaction is complete. So you will stop stirring when the reaction is complete. And you can tell it's complete when carbon-4 oxide is no longer being produced. Now, guys, before we continue with procedure number three, I want to say this. This is A and this is Y. Now, as you can see from the length of the horizontal bar, Y is in excess. We have too much of it. So this part of Y will react with F, but this is the excess portion. So in the next step, we are going to handle this excess volume of Y, the one that was unreacted in step one. So what are they telling us to do? Transfer this solution into a 250 ml volumetric flask and add distilled water to the mark. Label this solution as T. Now guys, this solution is going to contain sodium sulfate and water, the products of the first reaction. And it's also going to contain excess sulfuric 6 acid. We are not concerned though with sodium sulfate and water. What concerns us is the excess unreacted sulfuric acid, which will take part in the second reaction. So what are we being told to do with this? We're being told to transfer it onto a volumetric flask. Now, when it comes to volumetric flasks, they come in different sizes. So in this case, ours is 250 ml. It has a capacity of 250 ml. Now, volumetric flasks have max. So essentially what the max indicate is that if you want to fill this flask up to that particular point, it's going to contain a specific volume of solution. So in this case, if we fill this volumetric flask up to the max, it's going to contain a solution of 250 ml. This is going to be our solution T. Magina ya siwa babaishi. Solution T simply contains the excess unreacted sulfuric acid. Okay? Ah. Next step. Place solution T in a clean burette. Okay? So we are going to take a portion of solution T, fill it in a burette. And then pipette 25 cubic centimeters of solution B. Solution B is sodium hydroxide. This is going to be in a conical flask, okay? And we are going to pipette 25 cubic centimeters of solution B. That means every titration you carry out, solution B is going to have a volume of 25 cubic centimeters. Now, what volume of solution T will be used in this reaction? That is what we need to find out. We are going to add two drops of phenolphthalein and titrate. Now, the phenolphthalein is an indicator. It's going to show us when the endpoint has been attained. You know, when the reaction between sodium hydroxide and sulfuric acid has been completed. I want to say this. I'm not going to focus on filling of the table. This is something that I've already discussed in a previous video. I talk about the rules for filling the table, how you can ensure you get four out of four marks, and, uh, you know, other regulations when it comes to marking of questions dealing with titration. If you haven't watched that video, I highly, highly recommend you do so because it will enable you to score everything in such questions. So in this question, because my focus is going to be on calculations, I'm just going to fill the table as such. So let's just take our volume of T, you know, the one that was in the burette, as 21 cubic centimeters. Sour? Higher. Now let us start. So question number one, Calculate the average volume of solution T used. The average volume, we are simply going to look at our titles. We have three, and since they are exactly identical, we are going to take all three, divide by three, 
to give us 21.0 cubic centimeters. Okay, that's just it. Come on, Ilvosema, I'm not focusing on the table right now. Part B, the number of moles of solution B. Solution B is sodium hydroxide. We know the volume. We know the molarity. Can we get the moles? Oh, yes, we can. So moles are given by molarity multiplied by volume over 1,000. 0 0.1 multiplied by 25 over 1,000 gives us the number of moles of sodium hydroxide present in 25 cubic centimeters as 0 0.0025 moles. Okay. Moving on to the next question. Calculate the concentration of solution T in moles per liter. Now, when it comes to concentration, concentration can be given in grams per liter or in moles per liter. When they're asking for the concentration in moles per liter, they're essentially asking you for molarity. So if you have a formula that gives you molarity, you can easily use this. So we're going to use this. Molarity is given by moles over volume multiplied by 1,000. Do we know the volume? Oh, yes, we do. Doily average volume here to 21 cubic centimeters. Do we know the moles? Uh, not yet, but we can easily get it using the mole ratio. For us to use the mole ratio, we need to have a balanced chemical equation between the reagents. So what reagents am I referring to here? Sodium hydroxide and sulfuric acid present in solution T. So sodium hydroxide reacts with sulfuric acid as such. When you balance the chemical equation, this is what you end up having. Two moles of sodium hydroxide reacting with one mole of sulfuric acid. Does that mean you're going to have two moles of sodium hydroxide? Of course not. This simply means that whatever moles you end up having of sodium hydroxide are going to be double those of sulfuric acid. And whatever moles of sulfuric acid you're going to end up having are going to be a half of those of sodium hydroxide. Do we know the moles of sodium hydroxide? Yes, we just calculated this. So 0 0.0025. So what are the moles that are present in sulfuric acid in 21 cubic centimeters? Those 0 0.0025 divided by 2 gives you 0 0.00125. Now, guys. The question is not asking us for the number of moles. It's asking us for the concentration in moles per liter. You know, the molarity. So coming back to our initial formula. Molarity is given by moles over volume multiplied by a thousand. We now know what the moles are and the volume. So we can easily get our molarity. So unabandika everything and we get our molarity as 0 0.0595. So the concentration of solution T in moles per liter is 0 0.0595 moles per liter. So next question is asking us for the number of moles of sulfuric acid in 250 ml of T. Guys, this is where we are right now. This. So if we look at T, the concentration of the solution in the burette is going to be exactly the same as that in the volumetric flask. Why am I saying this? Because when it comes to the solution that is present in the burette, to Lichota too, we just took, you know, a specific volume from the volumetric flask in order to fill the burette. So these are the same solutions and they are going to have the same concentration. So if we are talking about having a concentration of 0 0.059 moles per liter, this essentially means that you're going to have these number of moles present in one liter. And one liter is equivalent to a thousand cubic centimeters. What is the volume of T in the volumetric plus? It's 250 ml. 250 ml is also equivalent to 250 cubic centimeters. One ml is simply the same as one cubic centimeters. So, if 0 0.059 moles are present in 1,000 cubic centimeters, how many are going to be present in 250 cubic centimeters? This gives us 0 0.01488 moles. These are the number of moles that are present in solution T, which is in the volumetric flask. Now, guys, let's not lose focus. Solution T, Nini, solution T is the excess of Y. Remember, we took an excess volume of Y 
and reacted it with A. So some of it reacted with A, but the excess is what was placed in the volumetric flask. So whatever solution is present in T, this is the excess sulfuric acid that did not react with A because there was too much of it. Our next question, what are the number of moles of sulfuric acid that were present in 80 cubic centimeters of the original solution Y? This is where we are. So in this solution, we have a volume of 80 cubic centimeters and a molarity of 0 0.4. This is what was given initially. If we have the molarity, if we have the volume, can we get the moles? Yes, we can. So the moles are going to be given by molarity multiplied by volume over 1,000. This gives us the number of moles as 0 0.032 moles. Guys, 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 these are the total number of moles of sulfuric acid that were present in solution Y. You know, the OG. But the moles or before we did anything, solution Y contains 0 0.032 moles. This was the one that was reacted with A. But out of the total, some of it reacted with A and some of it was in excess. What was the excess? 0 0.01488 moles. So we have the total, we have the excess. Can we get the number of moles that reacted with A? Yes, we can. So we are going to take the whole, which is 0 0.032, subtract the excess from it. This gives us the number of moles that reacted with A as 0 0.01712 moles. Our next question, calculate the number of moles of sodium carbonate that reacted with Y. Okay, guys, at this point, again, we are going to use our mole ratio. And for us to use the mole ratio, we need a balanced chemical equation of the reaction between sulfuric acid and sodium carbonate. So this is our equation. We have one mole of sodium carbonate reacting with one mole of sulfuric acid. So if the actual number of moles of sulfuric acid that reacted were 0 0.01712, then it's also going to be the same number of sodium carbonate that reacted. So we've already answered that. The next question, what is the mass of sodium carbonate that reacted? So we have the moles of sodium carbonate. We need to find the mass. We are going to take this formula. So mass is given by moles multiplied by the relative formula mass. We know the moles, there they are. We can easily determine the relative formula mass. So let's look at the formula of sodium carbonate. We are going to add the RAMs of each individual elements to get the relative formula mass of the whole. So RAM of sodium is 23. How many do we have? Two. RAM of carbon is 12, we only have one. RAM of oxygen is 16, and how many do we have? Three. Sum these up, and we get the RFM of 106. So we multiply this by the number of moles, and we are going to get the mass of sodium carbonate that was present in the initial solid A. And this gives us 1.81472 grams. Guys, Juliambua solid A has a mass of 2.65 grams. But this contained impurities. This simply means that it contains sodium carbonate and something else. So Harper, from our calculations, we can clearly see that the actual mass of pure sodium carbonate is 1.8 from the 2.65. The rest are simply impurities. The last question, work out the percentage purity of solid A. So we are going to take the mass of sodium carbonate, which we just got. Over the whole of it, pure plus impure, 2.65, multiplied by 100. And this gives us 68.48%. So out of the whole solid A, only 68.48% was actually pure sodium carbonate. Whew. Guys, we are done. We are done. To me, Melissa, I hope you stayed with me. How do you feel at this point? Like, are you good? Can you actually tackle another question of back titration by yourself? I believe you can. Let me know in the comment section though. See you next time.